This video deals with the correlation of discrete signals and basically correlation is a measure of how similar signals are. Now correlation techniques are used quite widely in industry. They're used in everything from radar systems to speech recognition. And they are also present in things like discrete Fourier transforms. So if you ever want to get a deep understanding of how the discrete Fourier transform works, you'll need to really understand correlation techniques. Now, there are lots of different correlation measurements out there and the expression that I'm using in this video is given by this formula here, okay, um, which can look a little bit confusing or daunting at the start, but hopefully by the end you'll see how straightforward it really is. Uh, now, this expression can be rewritten in this form over here when we're dealing with signals that have uh, a lot of zero values. for So for signals that have zero values up to sample number zero, and also which have zero values for all samples greater than n minus 1, where capital N represents the length of uh, the signal. Um, now, in the video I'm just going to run through some examples, some very basic examples, and the examples are given by these signals here, so I have x, y and z. So there are only four samples in duration, but even these short signals will illustrate the process of calculating a correlation measurement. And as usual, when you're dealing with signals that have, uh, that, uh, which are just shown as numbers, it can be difficult to interpret. So I'm just going to show the plot of these signals as well. So these are the plots of these signals. Um, so just can grab those signals and bring them closer so you can visualize them more easily. Um, so we can see here I have a plot of X, Y and Z where I'm showing the sample numbers on the horizontal axis and amplitude on the vertical axis. And we can see that the signals X and Y are very similar in shape. Um, so if we were to compare them you'd say okay X and Y are quite similar but uh, Y and Z are not so similar. Now it's easy for us to do that visually and um, it's easy for us to pick them out, pick out the different signals. But what we need is a, a way of doing this automatically because we want to build computer algorithms which will be automatically be able to determine whether sim signals are similar or not. And this is really where correlation comes in. It can be uh, used as an automatic way of determining whether signals are similar or not without having to plot them. So what I'm going to do is just run through how do we calculate the correlation measurement between X and Y first of all and then I'll run through how to calculate the correla correlation measurement between Y and Z using this expression up here. So let me just show you those calculations first of all. So um, here we go here. And this is the correlation between X and Y. We can see that uh, we get the zero samples of X and Y and we multiply them. And we add them to uh, samples number one of X and Y which have been multiplied together. Then we multiply X2 by Y2 and add it to finally X3 by Y3. So this top line here is basically just this expression up here expanded out. So we can see that this is an expansion of this uh, from in the range of n equal to 0 up to capital N minus 1, where capital N represents the length of the signal, which in this case is 4. So really n uh, goes from 0 up to 3. And when we substitute the values in, uh, we can see these, that, that's in this middle line here, we can see that the overall result gives you a value of 25. Now if you wanted to do that quite quickly, um, just visually you could say it's uh, 1 by 2 plus 3 by 3 plus minus 2 by minus 1 plus 4 by 3. Okay, So that's, it's basically just an element by element multiplication of each of the uh, elements in each of these arrays, if you want to think of these arrays rather, uh, rather than signals. Uh, so it's an element by element multiplication followed by a sum of the result of that element by element multiplication. Okay. Uh, now this result of 25, this is our correlation measurement and it, it means very little 
in isolation. We really need something to compare to it. So what I want to do now is just run through the correlation measurement associated with the signals Y and Z. And I'll just show you the calculation now. So this is the calculation of the correlation measurement between Y and Z in this case. So again, we can see it's 2 by 2, which is 4, by 3 by minus 1, which is minus 3, uh, minus 1 by 4, and then finally 3 by minus 2. And we sum the result of each of those multiplications to give you a value of minus 9. So the, we can see that the result is smaller than the result <coughs> earlier on when we uh, calculated a uh, correlation measurement between x and y. And basically, this is the way you interpret the correlation measurement. The larger the value of the correlation measurement, and the more similar the two signals are. Um, and that's all that correlation measurements are. Uh, it is that straightforward. Now, there is a problem with this particular approach, okay, and the problem is highlighted by um, considering the following situation. Imagine that I um, removed or replaced this value of 2 with a, a value of 100 instead, okay. So all of a sudden my signal uh, is changed. I have a sample number 100, and let's maybe try to plot that in. So the signal shape would look something more like this rather than this one here. And maybe I could uh, maybe get rid of this part here. Okay, so that's my new signal Z now. Uh, and one thing you'd say about this new signal Z, it is has a lot more energy. Its amplitude value is is way bigger than the other two signals. But by substituting in this value of two for a value of of one hundred, my um, calculations need to change. So instead of multiplying 2 by 2 here, this would be 2 by 100, which would give me a result here of 200 rather than 4. And the pen isn't working so well there, but we have a value of 200 down here, which is added to minus 3, minus 4, and minus 6, which would give me an overall result of minus, or sorry, plus 187. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm getting this large number, which, um, if we didn't know anything about the signal, is giving us uh, some misleading results. Okay, if we just looked at these numbers in isolation, and knowing what we know about correlation, we'd be saying, well, Y and Z are more similar than X and Y, which is obviously not the case from looking at the plots it's very clear that Y and Z are much more similar than uh, uh, Y and Z. Okay? Now, this problem is alleviated by using something called normalized correlation rather than this more basic form of correlation. And I'm going to deal with normalized correlation in a separate uh, video. Okay? But at this stage, you have the key understanding of what you need to, uh, to, to, well, to basically understand how correlation te technique works. They are basically just a multiply and accumulate uh, process. And the result of a uh, correlation will give you a numerical value. And basically, the larger the numerical value, the more similar the two signals are. But you have to apply this caveat that the signals that you're dealing with have to have this roughly the same energy. Otherwise, these results can be skewed. So in this last example, where I was highlighting one of the problems with, the, with this form of correlation up here, uh, the energy of Z is much more different to the energy in Y and X and this is why the result is skewed and the solution to that problem is to use normalized correlation which I'll cover in the next video. Um, now just to finish up I would just like to show you some code which will evaluate um, the correlation measurement using this technique and um, this is the code here. I'm going to make it available up on this WordPress site. I am using different sequences of numbers, in this case A and B, rather than X and Y. I'm setting N equal to the length of A, which is the same as the length of B. And basically, this is the key part of the code. Uh, I'm iterating through my range of values of N, which goes from 1 up to n, not n minus 1 as the equation showed, and this is basically down to the way MATLAB indexes its arrays. Um, and I'm calculating a result which is multiplying each element um, of the signal A 
by the signal B and after each iteration this core measure one variable is being in, uh, uh, increasing as we go through the uh, uh, as we go through the loop to give us a final result of our correlation measurement so you can go through that code in your own time um, it probably cl uh, more closely matches the expression uh, for correlation than this one down here but this line down here is effectively the same thing done nice and concisely uh, in MATLAB okay so thanks for your attention and I'll see you in the normalized correlation function video